Hi, I'm Kent. I've managed to finish wiring up all the electronics for my kiln and moved it. So now it's in its new home. Uh, on the bottom here, I have a couple of concrete blocks that I actually used for my old kiln. I'm using that to lift it up. I'm relatively tall, so by putting the blocks I'm raising the bottom up, I can get into the kiln easier. Around the side are all the electronics. I put them in this enclosure. This is mounted to the front of the original scut boxes. These are basically empty. The only thing in here is the connection to the elements using the high temperature wire that was passed through the back of this control box and into those. The other thing that goes through there is the wire for the thermocouple. I'm going to put the original kiln sitter box on the front here to close all that up in the piece of conduit. I haven't gotten to that yet, but this is functional as is, as long as I'm careful. Inside the box, from the bottom, uh, this is the Raspberry Pi. I've mounted it. I have a USB connector coming out the side. From the Raspberry Pi, we get up to the board that I created before. This has the MOSFET drivers and the sensor board for the thermal couple, and then it's connected to a power supply. This power supply here gives me 5 volts and 12 volts. The 5 volt volts drive the Raspberry Pi, which then steps it down to the 3 volt logic um, it uses, and then the 12 volts drives the relays. Speaking of the relays, here are the two relays. I have the top relay and the bottom relay. These control the two different rings within the kiln. This box is grounded, which is good. The old one was not, the original kiln. Um, the elements actually, when I was testing this, had shorted against the outside, and so I was actually tripping, tripping the, bike, the breaker. So I've uh, tried this out. Um, I have fired the kiln to very low temperatures to make sure that it's reading the thermocouple properly. The relays are both triggering on and off. So I've gotten it up to 150, 200 degrees. And of course I need to put the faceplate on this box and tidy everything up. I want to do a firing at cone six to see if the thermocouple is reading the kiln properly. Before I do that, you'll notice also here, I'm managing myself some uh, kiln furniture. So I've put some kiln wash on these shelves and it's still drying. As soon as that's dry, I'll be able to load up the kiln. I also got myself uh, some cones. Um, so I got cone five, six, and seven so I can test the temperature on the kiln. One of the nice things about having the digital controller is if the cones don't properly melt, say I don't hit cone six when I, where I want to, I can change the temperature profiles, either increase the temperature or increase the ramp speeds or even add a hold so I can actually get the temperature I want. So next I'm going to do a test firing. I'll put in the kiln shelves and the cones and we'll see if I can hit the temperature. I'll show you how that goes. It's a couple days later. I've been doing some test firings of my kiln at low temperature. I've been bringing it up to 200, 250 degrees. I think the highest I've gotten is about 700 degrees. Basically, I'm not trusting anything that I've done just to see if there's a mistake. And these videos are just documenting the process. They're definitely not a how-to. They're a what I did. Today, I want to bring it up to temperature. I'm going to do a full glaze firing, but I'm not going to put any pots in there. I'm going to put in my kiln furniture and put in some cones and see if the thermocouple is reading the right temperature. And the ground truth is really going to be the cones. The thermocouple may be off, the temperature profile I have may be slightly wrong, and so this is really the only way to test it. And a quick side note, this is my Wi-Fi solution. Since Wi-Fi can't get out of the metal box, I ran a USB extension cord out and up the wall, and I've just taped it on for right now. Eventually I'll find a more permanent solution, or, or maybe blue tape is permanent. We'll see. Next up is starting to put the kiln furniture in. I already have my bottom shelf in, so I'm going to start taking my furniture and the shelves that I put kiln wash on the other day and loading it up. I got three boxes of cones. I've got cone five, six, and seven. Since I'm firing at cone six, I want the cone to make sure that I'm not underfired or overfired as well. And I'm going to put cones on each of the different shelves so I can test the temperature of each different shelf. So one cone five, one cone six. And one cone seven. I have some extra kiln furniture from my previous kiln. I'm going to put that in there just to give it a little bit more thermal mass since I'm not putting in any pots. Okay, last layer. I do have one more shelf, but the way I've stacked these, there's not any more space. So I have three shelves in here right now. I think that's going to be good enough. All right, now I think it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna close this all up and then I will start the kiln program. Today, I've cleared my schedule. I don't have anything else I need to do so I can actually sit here and babysit this all day. I'm gonna come out and check it every now and then, make sure it's not getting too hot, make sure it's following the temperature profile, all of those types of things. I'm looking for temperature anomalies. I'm looking to make sure all my control electronics are still happy and doing the right thing. I have some pretty high confidence at this point since I've been doing these uh, initial test runs at lower temperatures. 
But just in case, I'm going to very much be careful today. I'll fire this up. It'll be done firing in about 12 or 13 hours. And then tomorrow, we should be able to open it up and see how the cones did. All right, take two. I fired the kiln. It got to around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. It was going pretty well. And then the temperature stalled out. I couldn't figure out what was going on. It turns out the board I was using to read the thermocouple maxed out. The thermocouple itself can go higher, but the particular board I chose and the chip on it couldn't go any higher than around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it was actually 1024 Celsius. That meant I needed to order a new temperature board. I went ahead and did that. It's a few days later. So I got the board in, and while I was at it, since I needed to wire that board up, it had an extra line. I wanted to go ahead and redo the control board for the relays as well. That board was getting kind of big and nasty in the MOSFET, so I think we're overkill. So what I did was replaced it with this board here, which has some transistors, some LEDs and resistors, and it's basically the bare minimum. So this one should work just fine. So what I'm going to do is install this on top of the Raspberry Pi. One of the other advantages is that I actually added the connector directly to the back of it, so I don't need to have jumpers going back and forth. I didn't like that in my original setup, and I was going to change it eventually. So I'm going to install this on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to open up the kiln, take out all of the cones. I don't think they melted, but I just want to start from scratch just to make sure. So I'll reload the kiln. Then when I have a free day again, I will fire the kiln, monitor the temperature, make sure it gets up to, up to temperature properly. Doesn't max out again, don't have any other issues, and let it cool and then check the cones. Maybe that time it'll work. As I said before, I don't actually trust any of this. I've been very cautious in making sure that I've been testing everything individually making sure each of the individual components work. Once I do that a few times, then I'll trust the kiln a lot more. I got the new daughter board installed on my kiln. It was putting up a good fight though. It required some both hardware and software changes to get working, but the new temperature sensor is working. I got my kiln fired again, and it was climbing past where it stopped before. However, I still have a problem. The elements were full on and the temperature was rising, but it was not keeping up. Eventually the program changed and it caught up a little bit and then fell back behind it. And then the temperature started decreasing. Here's a screenshot from the software showing that happening. When the elements were full on for a while, the temperature was going down when it should have been going up. So I think that means that the elements are no good. That is not too surprising. This kiln is extremely old. Uh, I was hoping I could get by with the elements in place, but it seems like that's not the case. Even firing to cone six, they can't quite keep up. And if you remember from my previous videos, the bottom ring in the kiln now is actually the old middle section, and the bottom element is technically undersized. I was hoping I could get by with that as well. Again, that seems not to be the case. So I ordered a brand new set of elements um, for a 1018 kiln, which is now matches this configuration. So when those come in, I will go ahead and replace all the elements. I think that may actually be the last thing to get this thing to fire. Uh, one of the advantages of getting the new elements in place means that I shouldn't have any hot zones. Uh, well, I was a little bit worried about that with the old elements and them not being exactly right. With brand new elements, um, that should not be the problem. Once I do that, the only thing left of the original kiln will be the fire bricks. All the electronics have been replaced and then the elements will be replaced as well. So I should have basically a brand new kiln. We'll see. I think I'm going to wrap this video here. If you have any questions, like always, please comment below and I'd be happy to answer it. Thanks.